All right, hello there everyone. I'm going to be working through a few different example problems to prepare for the first coding exam. All right, so we're going to start with this function named zip. Zip is going to take two different lists and it's going to build a pair, or sorry, it's going to build a single list where each of the elements in that list is a pair of the uh, corresponding input lists. So let's look at something like zip 0, 1 and 2, 3. This should return a single uh, list where we have a pair of 0, 2, and then a pair of 1 and uh, 3. All right, so let's see, how are we going to write this function? So one trick that I'm going to do here is I can actually match both of the lists at the same time by using cons. So I can match both of them together, and I can do the cons of and then let's say that both of them are uh, lists that contain elements. So one of them is a uh, head zero and the second one is a tail zero. And then list one can be broken down into head one and tail one. Okay, I'm gonna handle this case. I'm gonna come back here, but I'm gonna handle a few others. So let's say that the first list, LST zero, is the empty list. And the second list, LST1, is also the empty list. Well, in that case, I'm just going to return the empty list. All right. Uh, and then let's see if any other cases match. Then that just means that I didn't have as many. Uh, that means that one of them was not empty and the other one was empty. So in this case, we are also going to return the empty list. We should bake that into our definition as well. If there were a question on the exam like this, it would specify what you had to do when that occurred. Return, uh, return empty list for unused elements. So that I mean something like zero, one, and two, three, four, something like that. Okay, so now we just have to handle this, uh, this sort of interesting case which says, what do we do here? Well, we're going to do cons of cons head 0 and head 1 with zip on tail 0 and tail 1. All right. Now let's try and run that. Oops. We'll put to do here for now. Oh. I'm not in a quasi quote there, so I just have to use the regular underscore. And now I can do zip of 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and it gave me what I expected 0, 2, 1, 3. All right. If I try it with something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, uh, now let's do 4, 5, 6, except, uh, yeah, so this is going to be link 3, the previous one was link 4. So that should give us a back of length six, uh, list of back of length six. All right, and we're just dropping the unused elements. All right, so that's expected. All right, so now let's move on to the next one. Let's say we have something like this. So we'll do define zip test list. This is going to be the input to unzip. Just saving that there so I can. We'll play around with it later without having to reconstruct it. Okay, so now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to match. Uh, well, so I know I need to return a cons here. All right. So let's say match LST. If LST is the empty list, here I'm just going to return the empty list because ultimately, uh, sorry, no. I want to return a pair of empty lists because this function returns two lists because it returns a pair. So if I give you a, if I give you sort of a, the sublist of this, if I give you the empty list that corresponds when you sort of bottom out and run through all of these different previous cases, eventually you're going to end up here. You want this function to return cons of two different empty lists. All right, and the next one is the interesting case, which is when we have a, uh, a cons of a head and uh, 
actually no, it's going to be a car dot cutter. That's how you can match on a con cell. And then the rest is going to be uh, some other tail. All right. So now in that case, and see, we're matching here. We're saying match a list whose first element is a con cell. The con cell is the dot. So a dot builds con cells when this matching notation. So if you don't recognize that, you'll have to go back through and practice with pattern matching and specifically pattern matching on con cells. If you can learn how to do that, that might really help in this exam. See what we're doing here is we're matching a list whose first element is a con cell, since that's what this little match statement is doing right here. All right. So we've got that uh, we've got that first uh, that first con cell here, and we are unzipping it and building a pair of lists. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take tail, define unzipped tail is going to be unzip on uh, TL. All right. And what is that going to be? The type of this is actually it's going to be a con cell. This is a con cell whose uh, car contains the cars of tail and whose cutter contains the cutters of tail. And so what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to do cons of cons car car unzipped TL and then cons cutter of cutter unzipped TL. All right, now this is a little bit of a tricky one and I've kind of written it all, all at once. But I think you can kind of find out here what's happening. What we're doing is we're taking this, remember this result is going to return a pair of both of those zipped values and then we're going to match, uh, we could either, we could match against it, but in this case, I can just break it down manually by using car and cutter on unzipped TL. And then I build a con cell because I want to basically take the, the left hand side of this, uh, the, the sort of car of this result. I want to splice the R car that we've just matched onto that. I want to take the cutter of that, uh, of this result right here. I want to splice R cutter on top of that which you can see me doing, um, you can see me doing right here. All right. Okay. So that's unzip. Let's run unzip now. Unzip, zip, test, list. Okay, now we got application, not a procedure. Okay, so now I need to debug my code. Let's find out what's wrong with it. So let's display, or let's pretty print unzipped TL and then let's do unzip zip test list okay and it's showing me that I have the empty list right here um, I call finally okay so finally I got out to this base case my base case returned car unzipped TL looks like it returned the wrong thing. So car unzipped TL. So eventually this should return this empty, this, this case right here. I'm not sure why it's not. Let's find out. So let's think about this. Okay, so let's see what happened. Well, I'm still not sure what's going on. So let's do pretty print of LST. Then we'll do unzip of zip test list. Okay, perfect. Now we can kind of see what's happening. Okay, so the first time we got there, now we finally got to this point here where we've got LST is zero. So this is now going to return cons of this and this. And then we're saying application, not a procedure, expected a procedure. Oh, you know what I've done wrong? Shoot, I shadowed the binding for car with this thing right here. So this was just, uh, this was a result of bad programming style on my part. I shouldn't have shadowed these names. 
So let's say it's the uh, list. Uh, so let's see, what do we even want to call this? We want to call this um, first car, and let's call this first cutter. OK, so that was my problem. Cons of first car, and then cons of first cutter. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. All right, let's see what's happening. And then we'll remove the, uh, we'll remove the debugging statements. OK, uh, looks right to me. 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6. OK, that looks all right to me. Good. Now let's take the debugging statements out. All right, um, this is a good example of how at first I didn't really understand what was going on. And then I added a little bit more debugging information to, to sort of help me find out. And then I kind of realized what, what I had gotten myself into. OK, so now we're going to write this function map. Map that's going to map a function f over some list. Map is going to take every element of list. It's going to apply f to it. And then it's going to give us the result. So to make things a little bit, well, let's write the simple definition first. So let's say um, if empty huh LST, we could have also said equal huh LST empty list. If that's the case, then we're just going to return the empty list. Otherwise, we're going to return cons of F of car LST and then uh, all of that with map f of cutter of LST. All right, so we're going to apply f to the first element. That's what we're doing in this S expression right here. We're going to take that, and we're going to cons it on to mapping over the rest of the list, which is what we're going to do right here. That's what we're going to do when the list is not empty. We could have equivalently written this as match uh, LST and then said if it's the empty list return the empty list if it's a head and a tail return cons of f of head with map f and then tail that way it makes more sense to me uh, so that's how I would write it but you could also write it using ifs alright so now let's try writing a loop instead so uh, this is how I would do it tail recursively so let's find, uh, let's define loop um, f uh, lst, and then we're going to need to build up a accumulator list. So I'll just call that ack actually. And now we're going to say match lst. If it's the empty list, then uh, we're going to return ack, except I'm going to build ack in reverse. So I'm going to reverse ack actually. It's a common thing that happens when you start writing these loops. Otherwise, we've got a head and a tail. In that case, I'm going to loop with f as well, uh, that tail. But then I'm going to cons on f of head with um, acc, or ack, sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to loop. I'm going to start with the empty list as my empty accumulator. And you see what's happening here. That accumulator will get built onto, but it's going to uh, I'm always going to be consing f of head onto that accumulator in reverse order, right? So if I start with the list 1, 2, 3, I'm going to first cons uh, f of 1 onto the empty list, then cons f of 2 onto that, and then f of 3 onto that. And then I'll get a list that's the same but in reverse order. So that's why in my base case right here, when I bottom out, I return from that loop by reversing the accumulator. All right, so that's the tail recursive version. You can see it's tail recursive because this call site right here is in tail form. There's nothing that happens after it. All right, so now let's write a function append that's going to take uh, LST0 and LST1. OK, so there's a con the, the trick with append is basically once you get LST down to the empty list, you can just return LST1. All right, so that's the observation, is that what you can do is you can pull off cars from LST0 until you get down to the empty list. And then at that point, you can return LST1 because you can use this fact, append of the empty list, and L is always equal to L, right? In general, though, if you have append of cons of E, 
and then some rest, and then L, well, that's going to equal cons of E, and then uh, append rest, and then L. And I guess in writing the math, I basically wrote the defi uh, definition, except we have to translate it to a match statement. So let's match LST0 and say, if it's the empty list, we're going to return LST1. Otherwise, it's a uh, cons of a uh, head and a tail. And in that case, we're going to do cons of head, append, tail, and then L. All right, let's test these. Oops. Uh, append tail to, um, what do I want to append tail to? LST1. There we go. Okay, let's try that. Append 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it works. All right, there we go. Uh, what about map? Let's do map of lambda x uh, minus x and then over 1, 2, 3. That works. All right, so there we go. Uh, in general, for the coding exam, we're going to have a problems that look a lot like these. Uh, if you can tackle these kinds of questions, these are the ones you're really going to need to practice for the exam. So, all right, good luck, everyone.